Space never ceases to amaze us with its mysteries, and sometimes quite big ones, both literally and figuratively. Today, we'll tell you about one of these mysteries, namely about a very special object. Its discovery opens up exciting prospects for each of us, or better yet, it gives us hope. Have you ever thought about the existence of parallel worlds? Where your life could be completely different? Do you think this could be real? Maybe your life's integrity is an illusion. We all perceive our life as one continuous journey through space and time. In reality, we are an exponentially growing set of events that branch out from moment to moment. There can be multiple versions of you, so in a way, you can call yourself immortal, as somewhere always exists another version of you. In this video, we'll present a lot of interesting facts. You'll find out what cosmic microwave background radiation is, why it's so interesting, what evidence supporting the existence of the multiverse has been found, whether you have a chance for another life, and finally, what Schrodinger's cat and Einstein have to do with anything. Furthermore, we'll dispel several entertaining myths along the way. The first ever evidence of the multiverse. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. This story began in 1948 when a Russian-born American physicist, Georgi Gamo, calculated that radiation with a temperature of about 50 degrees Kelvin, or minus 267 degrees Celsius, should have formed during the Big Bang that gave rise to the universe. Later on, it turned out that the scientist was mistaken by more than an order of magnitude. The radiation temperature was only 2.7 Kelvin. This radiation was accidentally discovered in 1965 by radio astronomers Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson at Bell Laboratories. They used a radio antenna built in the early 1960s to work with one of the first echo communication satellite systems. The satellites were outdated, they safely burned down in the oceans, and scientists got a hold of the antenna. Penzias and Wilson actually wanted to register the emission of neutral hydrogen which is abundant in the universe, but the microwave noise constantly interfered with their measurements. Oddly, they couldn't identify the source, as it seemed to be coming from all directions. They tried to explain it by New York, the military and their tests, and virtually by everything that came to mind, even the pigeon droppings that interfered with the antenna. The litter was cleaned, but the noise remained. Only later did they understand the nature of this noise. It was microwave background radiation that scientists were looking for for so long, only to be discovered by accident. For this very accident, these two scientists received the Nobel Prize in 1978. It became clear right away that having made a mistake in the temperature value, Gamo was right about something else. The cosmic microwave background radiation was indeed ubiquitous and isotropic. That is, it came from any point in the universe and had the same temperature everywhere. Our world is literally immersed in this radiation. Of course, there were some minor root mean square deviations of the cosmic microwave background temperature, as the theory predicted. On average, their value is 18 microkelvin. That is a number with a bunch of zeros, minus 0 0.000018. So if you color code the temperature of the cosmic microwave background radiation on the map of the starry sky, the coldest areas marked with blue and the hottest areas marked with red, it will look like a patchwork quilt or light ripples on the surface of the water. And now let's talk about the great mystery of the universe. In 2004, the American WMAP satellite was performing some routine research for mapping universal microwave radiation that emerged 380,000 years after the Big Bang. When the data was pieced together and processed, 
it revealed something unusual. And this is what it looks like. The circled area is a cosmic microwave background cold spot. That is, this area is even colder than the universal microwave background radiation. One might wonder, what's so special about it? In fact, there are two things. First, this area is significantly colder. As we said, an average temperature deviation is 18 microkelvin, and here it is 70 microkelvin, and can go as high as 150 microkelvin in the center. If the cosmic microwave background radiation is represented by the sea and its temperature fluctuations appear as waves, then the average fluctuation of 18 microkelvin would be a slight ripple. And now imagine that among these ripples, you came across a section with several meter high waves. And this area is just huge. But there is actually one more thing to make your jaw drop. The cold spot is almost 2 billion, no, not kilometers, but light years long. To put this in perspective, our Milky Way galaxy is only 100,000 light years across. So this universal refrigerator can store as many as 20,000 of our galaxies. And another bit of information, the US has the area equivalent to about 8,000 New York cities. Don't you just love these scales? But what is this area right here? Where did it come from? According to standard cosmological theory, low temperature accompanies low density. That's easy to understand. Take, for example, some hot gas. If you allow it to expand, then its temperature and density will start to drop. So scientists have discovered a truly humongous void, the supervoid. Since it was found in the Eridanus constellation, it was dubbed the Eridanus supervoid. If somebody got to its center, they would be submerged in total darkness. It's impossible to navigate there. No gravity, no stars, freezing cold, an ominous place. Probably this is the darkest place humanity has ever known. But how did it come about? Scientists have known about voids for quite a while. These are vast areas between galactic filaments where there are hardly any galaxies or clusters. Therefore, their density is about 10 times lower than in other parts of the universe. Voids were first discovered in 1978 by Stephen Gregory and Laird A. Thompson at Kitt Peak National Observatory in Arizona. They range in size from 30 to 300 light years. But 2 billion years is too much. Moreover, some computer simulations performed within the framework of the generally accepted Big Bang Theory have confirmed that voids should arise, provided that the universe expands evenly. But it can't explain the Eridanus supervoid. With such a size, such a low density, and such a low temperature, it simply can't exist. Scientists have put forward several explanations as to how this giant anomaly appeared. For example, that it's a huge black hole that absorbs everything coming its way. It will expand and eventually swallow the Earth along with people. But don't you worry. First, the Eridanus constellation is 3 billion light years away, so it will take a very long time indeed. Secondly, calculations show that such a black hole can't exist. After all, don't forget that for all its hugeness, this area is actually empty. For example, a black hole weighing 100 million solar masses is actually smaller than the sun itself. The second hypothesis is as follows. According to the standard cosmological theory, our universe is filled not only with regular, or so-called baryonic matter, but also with dark matter. It doesn't take part in electromagnetic interaction, and therefore cannot be observed. But it's involved in the gravitational interaction. According to some American researchers, there shouldn't be any dark matter in the Eridanus supervoid. Otherwise, it would be much heavier and would be evidenced by higher radiation temperature. Isn't this ironic? A huge dark void 
has no dark matter. So maybe there is no dark matter after all. And if there isn't, then the Big Bang Theory is also wrong. And therefore, it doesn't make sense to explain Eridanus' supervoid with it. But this might have gone too far. There are a lot of objective observations proving the existence of dark matter. So what is this cosmic microwave background cold spot anyway? Is there a more plausible explanation for this huge phenomenon in every sense of the word? There is. Moreover, not only is this explanation plausible, it's super exotic. This cold spot may be the first real proof of the multiverse, the infinite number of worlds, and possibly some alien civilizations that exist outside the known universe. Perhaps this spot was left as a result of our universe colliding with another universe. Just imagine, we can see the aftermath of the collision of entire universes. This is too much to take. But how is this even possible? Let me explain. In 2017, a PhD student, Rory McKenzie, and Professor Tom Shanks of the Center for Extragalactic Astronomy at the University of Durham, England, proposed a rather unusual explanation. At first, Professor Tom Shanks frankly stated that the standard cosmological theory allows for such a wide-range temperature fluctuation. The scientist estimated the likelihood of such an event as 1 in 50. But this is too small a chance to trust reliability of theory. Therefore, Shanks and Mackenzie have put forward another explanation that unequivocally explains the existence of this cold spot. They argue that this is not even a void, but a place where our universe collided with another bubble universe. This statement is supported by other physicists, namely Anthony Aguirre, Matt Johnson, and Matt Kleben. Their works proved that a collision between our bubble universe and another bubble in the multiverse would leave an imprint on the cosmic background radiation that would resemble a circular spot with either more or less intense radiation. This is actually what we observe. But then the big question arises, does the multiverse really exist? According to one of the interpretations of quantum mechanics, it does. Quantum mechanics studies the phenomena of particle interaction and determines its laws. Let's consider it in more detail. This story begins with Young's double-slit interference experiment. If we were to project small, firm balls at the plate with a slit, we would see a line on the screen at the site of impact. If we make another slit in the plate, we will naturally see two lines on the screen. Now let's see how the waves behave under such conditions. The waves pass through the slit and hit the screen with a greater force precisely along the slit. But something unexpected happens when we add another slit. We would see an interference pattern on the screen, like this one. That is, there are not two lines, but a lot of them. This is absolutely typical for waves and can be solely attributed to their properties. So far, everything is clear. But let's look at the same experiment done with an electron as a projectile. If we throw electrons through one slit, we will see one line on the screen, just as in the case of firm balls. But when passed through two slits, electrons won't form two lines on the screen as expected but rather quite a lot of lines, as is the case with waves. Physicists have long wrapped their brains around this fact. They hypothesized that electrons may hit each other, which is why they are cast aside in different directions. This creates an interference pattern with many, many fringes on the screen. Then, physicists started to shoot electrons one by one so as to eliminate the slightest chance of their collision. But here's the fun part. Yet again, scientists saw the same interference pattern on the screen. That is, quite a lot of lines. But how can elementary particles create a pattern the way waves do? After all, they were released one at a time. Nobody understood this. 
Then, physicists decided to see through which of the slits the electron was passing. They put a measuring device near one of the slits to register the passing of the electron at that particular site. Then, something even more exciting happened. The picture on the screen changed dramatically. Now, there were two lines instead of an interference pattern, just like in the beginning when scientists fired firm balls at the plate. That is, the very fact that scientists observed the electron affected the experiment's results. It turns out that observation really affects the course of events. As a result, two theories have emerged explaining particles' behavior. The first theory is the Copenhagen interpretation, an idea put forward by Heisenberg and Bohr. In a nutshell, the theory proposes that an unobserved particle flies through one of the two slits as a group of equally probable particles in different positions and interferes with itself. Einstein and Schrodinger didn't like this interpretation. It was Einstein's famous phrase, God does not play dice, that referred to this idea. More precisely, Einstein said, I am at all events convinced that he does not play dice. Although the phrase retained its original meaning, it was then distorted to, God does not play dice. Schrodinger proposed a famous thought experiment with a cat, which is actually an argument against this Copenhagen idea that is often confused with proof. In simple terms, there is an atom that can either disintegrate or not disintegrate. Until this has been verified, it's in a state of superposition, that is, in both states simultaneously. Let's try and take this superposition state to the macro level, that is, not the atom level, but to the level of large bodies. We can do this by linking the decay of the nucleus to a major change. For example, the cat's death. As such, an atom can be considered in superposition, while the cat cannot, because no one has ever seen a broken and whole cup at the same time. It's always either broken or whole. This means that the idea that a particle can be found in either of two states with an equal probability is nonsense. We need to find another explanation. By the way, the Schrodinger experiment considers not a male, but a female cat. Then, another theory appeared, one that presupposes the existence of parallel worlds. Each version of life begins to exist in its own separate reality, which is in no way connected with others and has a life of its own. It's like Doctor Strange. It turns out that there exist all possible scenarios, but we randomly find ourselves in only one. The most surprising thing here is not the idea of alternative worlds, but the fact that it's proposed by scientists and not by sci-fi writers. It's called the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. If it is correct, then there is an almost infinite or an infinite number of versions of you, each perceiving the world as an individual and having no idea about the existence of other counterparts. Consequently, the very number of alternative life trajectories is extremely high. From the time you were born, or what seems to be you, has taken different paths in different worlds. The complete set of you is a massive root system that grows exponentially, with each root representing a new life. As always, the more answers you have, the more questions arise. If you are interested in the topic of quantum mechanics, write about it in the comments so we could make a separate episode about it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button.